I receive a lot of comments and emails from viewers and subscribers asking me what's the difference between buying and selling a covered call. So in this video, I'm going to share with you the five things that I think about whenever I compare the seller of a covered call to the buyer of a covered call. So one of the first things I think about is what are the mindsets of the two parties involved in this transaction? Starting with the seller, they're thinking that the share price may go up to the strike price or just slightly above the strike price on or before the expiration date. And from a buyer's perspective, they're thinking that the share price will exceed the specified strike price on the option contract on or before the expiration date. The next difference I always think about is what does it take to become the seller or the buyer of the covered call option contract? So for a trader that's interested in becoming a seller of a covered call, they need to own or control 100 shares of stock for each option contract that they're thinking about selling. And for the person that wants to become the buyer of the covered call, they need to have sufficient funds in their trading account so that they can purchase the shares. And that's calculated by taking the number of shares in the option contract, so for one contract it would be 100 shares, and multiplying it by the strike price. The next thing I think about is what does it take to start selling an option contract? So the seller needs to write a covered call option contract and they're going to be using their shares that they hold as collateral. Now after the seller writes the covered call and makes it available to the open market for purchase, those shares now become reserved as part of the collateral in order to cover the covered call. Now for the buyer, in order to, for them to get started, they need to identify a covered call option contract that has the terms and conditions that they agree with. So for example, they're going to be looking for a specific expiration date with a specified strike price and a premium amount that agrees with what they believe will make that option contract profitable for them. Next, I'm going to look at how the seller and buyer make money from this covered call option contract. So for the seller, they got two ways that they make money from this option contract. So the first is if the option contract gets exercised, then the difference between the strike price and what they paid for the shares or their cost basis, that delta now becomes their price appreciation. So that's a profit for them. The other gain that the seller enjoys from selling the covered call option contract is the premium that they received from having their contract filled. So when their option contract is filled, in other words, purchased by a buyer, that seller receives an immediate credit, which is deposited to their trading account. Similarly, for the buyer, there are two ways that they can collect a profit from the covered call. The first is if the market price rises above the strike price, then that buyer has an immediate, unrealized profit from the price appreciation. For example, if the strike price is $10, but the actual share price in the open market is $15, then that buyer could exercise the option contract, purchase the shares for $10 per share, and then immediately turn around and sell those shares for $15 per share. So that $5 difference is an immediate profit for the buyer. The second method that a buyer can use to collect money off of this option contract is they can turn around and sell their option contract in the open market to a different buyer. For example, if they paid $1 per share in premium for the option contract, but the option contract has gone up in value, they could potentially turn around and sell that same option contract and charge $1.50 per share as the premium. And the difference between what they paid for the option contract in premium versus what they were able to sell that same option contract for and collect as premium, that difference is now their new profit. The next difference that I think about is what happens after the expiration date? Well, for the seller, if the option contract was exercised, then the seller no longer owns those shares. And so that seller is going to have profit in their pocket, but no shares, right? So they're going to have profit from the premium that they received and also profit from the price appreciation, which, as I mentioned earlier, that's the difference between the strike price and their cost basis. However, if the contract expired worthless, in other words, the market price closed below the strike price on the expiration date, then the seller still owns or maintains ownership of their shares. And so at that point, the seller can turn around and they can sell another covered call, right? They could specify a new uh, option contract with a different expiration date and different strike price. And for selling that new option contract, they would receive even more premium. Now for the buyer, 
If they were able to exercise the option contract, then they were assigned the shares, and now they have ownership of those shares, and they're going to pay for them with the money that they had reserved as their collateral. Now, because the buyer is the owner, they can decide to do whatever they want with those shares. They can immediately turn around and sell them, or they can hold them for future growth, or whatever they want. If, however, the option contract expired worthless, then that transaction is completed for the buyer, and they don't get assigned the shares. Now, the money that was reserved as collateral, those funds get released, and the buyer can use them immediately for purchasing a different call option, or buying shares directly, or withdrawing the money from their account. If you like the information about my stock picks, then consider joining my Patreon, where I share exclusive videos on my stock picks every week that I'm going to be using for profitable trades. I also include my research notes, stock analysis, and trading strategies for every stock I pick to watch for that week. And of course, all my videos posted on my Patreon are ad-free. If you're still watching this video, I just want to say thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I also want to wish you good luck and lots of success with all of your trades.